What's up everyone, Movie Mania Nick here. As you can see in front of me, I am here, still here in Morristown, New Jersey. Uh, this building here is called Acorn Hall. And you guys can read about this right here. So we're gonna go inside or somewhere and check this place out. Acorn Hall, we're in the Morris County Historical Society at Acorn Hall. Uh, we were founded in 1950s and in 1971, Mary Crane Hone, the last surviving relative of the Crane Hone family who lived here for five generations, gave this hall to the Morris County Historical Society. So there became the Morris County Historical Society at Acorn Hall. Um, so Acorn Hall was originally built in 1856. Um, and it didn't look like this originally. It was just this main building without the tower, without the dining room wing, no porches and decorations. It's a much plainer house. It's a Georgian four square, four rooms on the bottom, four on the on top, hence okay. the name. Um, and then uh, it was built by the Skirberhorns, Dr. Peter and his wife Louisa Skirberhorn. Um, they already had one child and they, uh, they came out here because the doctor was having some lung trouble and he was kind of getting into the country. He also had a friend next door, John Hoad, who sold him the land to build this house. And that was like his connection to the community. So he tried to, um, he, they stayed here only a few years because it basically became a family tragedy. Uh, his wife died, or his second daughter died shortly after being born, and then his wife died shortly after giving birth to their third child. Mm. So he tried to make it work for a few years out here, but ultimately he felt it was better for his daughters to move back to the city. So he moved in next door to his sister in law. She helped raise his children, and there he stayed. Um, and when he sold this house to Augustus Crane, um, he sold many of the contents. So we have some rooms that are very original to the 1856 uh, first um, iteration of the house that stayed all the way through to the 1970s when Mary Crane home deeded the house over to the historical society. Um, see here, it's Trumpoy paneling. You'll see this pattern kind of throughout the house. There's lots of trompoy. Is that the like the original or is it? This, this was the original from Augustus. Okay. So the Skirmerhorn's original front door would have been here. When Augustus took over the house by 1860, he added the tower. He added all these porch areas. He added the dining room wing. He extended the roof line and he added the porches on the back. Um, and he came out here with his wife, Mary Bowles Crane. He had two daughters and two sons. Both his sons were as Augustus Jr. and um, Benjamin. They were both out of uh, a military academy at that point. Um, his daughters one stayed here, one was in music school in, the, in New York City. So he came out here to be a gentleman farmer. Um, he also had recently come into some inheritance and he put a lot of work into this house, but then he realized that with the uh, with the overhead that he was putting into the house, he was going to need more income. So he also okay. took on directorships of local banks. Uh, so I guess what if you want the different who you're here to see, what's going to be available. Okay. Calling card, which would give your name and your address and the days you were available. Uh, and then there's social circles, I don't know if you know much about it. Like you wouldn't, you know, you didn't have a phone or anything, so you would just have a day where you were home, and then on the days where you were visiting, you would go around to people, kind of say hi, stay for maybe half an hour or so, and then we would go to your next visit. And that okay. was the way people learn social networks. <laughs> Okay. So, the library was kind of the man cave, was the only room the man of the house was decorated at the time. Um, here we have pictures of Joanna, um, uh, Joanna Hone and her husband, John Hone. And um, there are ancestors of the Hone family who originally owned the land, sold to the Skirmer Horns, but then later became relatives of the Crane. Because of the Cranes, because the first Mary Crane married uh, their grandson, John Hone, who was the boy next door. And they lived almost across the street for a few years, and I'll talk about more of them more throughout the tour. Okay. Um, and this is Benjamin Crane, the ancestor of Augustus Crane, who bought the house. Uh, he was also a merchant. This is Morristown in the 1860s. And then uh, Augustus 
uh, Crane, who bought this house for both of your horns. He was a very big art collector, and um, so you see a lot of his paintings throughout the house. Originally, he had everything in one painting gallery, did from the original, because it's like a fabric kind of consistency, and it became almost black over the years. All the fireplaces in this house are coal fireplaces, and then over um, over the course of the years, it had a coal fired, very antiquated heat to that uh, era. Very antique. Yeah. <laughs> to the dining room wing, which was built by Augustus Crane in the 1860s. Um, this is not the original look of the room. There was only this bay window at the time, and then in the 30s, Alice Castleman here put in the window. There was actually an organ there, which was donated to a local church. She wanted a window, and she got it. So the organ was like right here? Uh, the organ was right here where this little organ is. Um, there's actually a picture here on the little organ. Oh, this right. is the original organ setup. It was a very musical family, and um, in keeping with the like long Victorian feast, where you'd have like a five-hour meal, you would mm -hmm. pull away the table and have dancing, and then come back and eat some more. So this was donated nice. to a local church, and then this window was put in. This organ that we have, the Mason Hamlin organ, it is period accurate, but it's uh, it's not original to the family. He is the one who bought the house from the Skirmer Horns and, and uh, added this wing and really changed the look of the house to the Victorian Italian that you see now. Hmm. He bought this fireplace from Italy. This is his sideboard and his table. And you'll see the fruit pattern that's on the sideboard. And it's also on the knees of the table. So let's go back to the table book to show you. It's kind of hard to see, I guess, for the camera, but. Um, see how ornate what, it whatever was. Whatever I can get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there are two more leaves that there make this go. table fit 12 people. Because until then, the, the children of Augustus Crane were living here. And they didn't really change anything. There's Julia and her husband, some of his uh, students or wards. And they were still, and also her brother Benjamin, they were still living with an outhouse. No running water in the house. It's very green. And you said this is the butler pantry? Yeah, this is the butler's pantry. It was recently this just this spring repainted to the original green colors. And um, we even have if you look in the there's they had the ceiling green at the time, so we had that as a representative sample. Okay. Um, and they would have had the 1930s kitchen. Hmm. Until then it was just a wood-fired stove in the basement. We were done in the 80s. The artist made the panels and then applied them in these uh, in workshop and then brought them here and applied them. So gives the I don't know how convincing it is, but it gives the look of marble paneling on the wall. Okay. Um, so this um, elevator was put in in the 30s for Augustus III. He was Alice Castleman's husband and the father of Mary Crane Hone. He had a heart condition, so the stairs were very difficult for him. And uh, when we visit the parlors, you'll see that the mirrors are also a very prominent part of the house. Um, originally, the light was either kerosene or whale oil, so it was a lot dimmer. This is the original wallpaper. You can see how how much pollution has made it dirty over the years. Yeah. Um, but if you look up at like the top corners where the top border is pulling away, you'll see how bright the blue originally was. And uh, it matches. You'll see it, it matches the uh, the furniture much better. Mm. And it's actually two sets of furniture that are painted to look like one. And we think this was purchased for the two crane girls when they were. When they were here, so uh, at that time you would have shared a bed with your sister or your, your brother in the Industrial Revolution and the effects of that in uh, in what was really a middle class home at the time. Um, hmm. So we also think that possibly once 
Mary Crane, by Navy Captain. He's the son of, um, he was the brother of uh, Alice Castleman, and their father was Brigadier General Breckenridge, John Breckenridge Castleman, who was not only a Confederate captain in the Civil War, but went on to serve in the U.S. Army and even was a military governor of Puerto Rico. Um, he, this is his son, he was had a wartime promotion to lieutenant and then was later promoted to captain. One of his promotions is signed by Theodore Roosevelt. And uh, we like to see kind of that Alice and, uh, and her brother, uh, it's definitely meant for a much larger home. This is from her mother's home in Kentucky. When they moved to here, they brought 42 crates of furniture. Um, this separates into three pieces. This is the original master bedroom. And you can see the furniture matches the sideboard and the table from downstairs. Um, the bulging furniture oh, yeah. that fell off the mirror here. But um, we have the original carpet. You can see in the corners how how vibrant it originally was. Um, people usually remark on the smallness of the bed. Uh, and, and these two girls are actually, these are the two Skirmerhorn girls who lived here only a very short time. But, um, you know, they grew up and they, they grew up and they went out to have good lives. Uh, so this room had some leakage from the, from the chimney, but uh, all the cracks seem to be stable now. So let's look at those little things are but that's so this is the re the original wallpaper um it's actually paper that's applied to the wall and then the stamps are stamped on afterwards it's an aluminum stamp opulent marble downstairs because guests don't come up here all the time it is connected to the master bedroom and we have this is called the nursery by the family, so we think it's, it's possible that um, Mary Crane, who moved across the street and became Mary Crane Hone, it's possible that her two, her eventually her three boys, stayed here and were cared for. Hone, so she's Mary Crane, who became Mary Crane Hone, um, and behind her, well, facing her are her family. That's her father, Mrs. Crane, and her mother, Mary Bowles Crane. Um, and then this lady here is the next Mary Crane home. And she's the last family member who lived here and the one who gave the house over to the Mars County Historical Society. She was an actress and an activist, and uh, she had about a 17-year career, beginning with going to Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts when she was 17 years old. The house would have ended right here. And um, you see they still had the stamps for the wallpaper because they were able to replicate it in the new edition. <laughs> the so we are actually in the tower right now? This, this little this... area is the tower. Yep. Okay. Um, in the attic, it does open up into like a full tower and there's even, um, you can see outside there's large windows, then there's even kind of like a little section in the crown. Oh, okay. And you, it's tall enough to stand up there. I've never been all the way up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> Staircase is very narrow and rickety. So how many uh, Mary C Cranes were there? So, well, this is the second Mary Crane from this side of the family. Um, and then with the other names, there's like three Augustuses, two Benjamins. Okay. The names seem to just... Just keep they going. Really, they really reuse the names. There's the Mary Jeez. Bowles Crane, Mary Crane Hone, and then Mary Crane Hone, the, I don't know, the second. So. Okay. <laughs> Back to the, this room, this is the second room upstairs on this side that's part of the original house and you'll notice the difference, I think this is a wide plank pine from downstairs as well, versus that more ornate floor from the dining room wing. And then uh, right now we have a medical exhibit on Morris County uh, medical history, hospitals, and then uh, I don't know if you're from the area, if you've heard of Grace Owen. No, uh, okay, no, so I have it not. Was, um, it was a mental hospital in it was now Mars Plains, okay. and uh, it, be it became very infamous. And then it was abandoned for the, the oldest buildings were abandoned for many years and became like was, we can't have proof for sure. But this is originally allegedly from uh, Arnold's Tavern, which became All Souls Hospital, and Arnold's Tavern dates back to Revolutionary War. Where Jeez. Washington 
supposedly stayed there. But you know, it's all it's all anecdotal. We can't say 100% that happened, but <laughs> that's the story behind this mantle. Um, and then this is the original Mars um, Hospital building, which um, Arnold Tavern became this. It burned down. There's a picture of the. So basically, it was that. Yeah, and the, yeah. this building doesn't exist anymore entirely. But this um, this was an artist rendition of Arnold Tavern. Which Washington supposedly stayed at became the first All Souls Hospital in Marstown, and then this building was built, um, later burned down, um, and then we also have um, now it's, it's up on Mount Kemble Avenue, which is empty. They also had a teacher uh, nursing teaching academy. So like this at the top, there's actually dolls in the cribs. It's not real real children. <laughs> Um, and then again, like more of a teaching, it's not like a real patient, it's yeah. a doll. Uh, there's some things from the Mansion Bay and the Women's, Associ Women's Medical Association. And then some all became nurses who were all trained there. as the Schuyler Hamilton house because the Schuylers purchased it and that's where Betsy Schuyler allegedly met uh, Alexander Hamilton for the first time. So, uh, but it, it was originally built by Dr. Campfield who was the first doctor in Morris County and that's why it has these two names as the Campfield house and Schuyler Hamilton house. Is that the one that's across, um, around the corner? Uh, further down? I believe so. Because I think this is my next yeah, stop. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> Um, All right. You might be thinking of Morristown Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. Here we have most of the memorabilia from Greystone Park, um, which is really called Greystone Lunatic Asylum. Um, so it was a very distinctive Gothic style building. And you can see some of the pictures of the outside here, as well as pictures of the inside of the building when it was operational. So it was originally built to house about 1,200 staff, but oh. it became like an overflow for New York, for um, like patients who were too poor to pay, and it also became like one of the only places in this area that was had this plan to help treat the mentally ill in a much more humane way than they had been treated at the time in his time in the 1800s. Um, he designed the building, a, this is the foundation of the building as part of a map of the campus. And you can see it's got this wing shape and he did that so there were no built, no rooms would be in of humane treatment for the mentally ill. It's really like the countryside so we have a piece of the railroad, like just the railroad tie from the, that area. Um, some of the plans that we got were found by anonymous donors and donated to the society. Um, there's more pictures of, of Greystone as an operating place than there. It's just representative of different decades that Greystone was open, so it doesn't have a specific tie to there or some medical equipment. You would sit in a chair with just your head sticking out of that cabinet and you would have like warm steam circulating around you. They thought that, that like direct heat to the lungs and the chest would help heal. This is a list of items used by the kitchen of Greystone and another uh, uh, plan for part of the building. permission to do drone footage of part of the demolition and you'll see you can look this up on YouTube as well you'll see that they go at one point they go into the chapel and it's they didn't really all the windows are still there everything's really there it's kind of this is very sad that they did not preserve any part of it okay. and that's a picture of the chapel um, in an abandoned state but it's, it's still 
there's a lot that they could have been preserved. <laughs> oh, and then some more items from uh, from the building. Here's like a like before and after picture. Of and then Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, um, that's in Western West Virginia, and it is a historical site that's open for tours. They they do, and, uh, and um, we have um, the Greystone um, Dentist and the former Greystone. Um, These rhymes of a raver, and uh, it was published by the Greystone Print Shop. They and then the. Their two, their daughters actually met up with each other. Dagger Corbin's daughter. The back parlor and what they, uh, the family also referred to as the music room. Uh, this is also Julia Crane, uh, sorry, Mary Crane Hone's piano. So she's the one who married the boy next door, John Hone. Um, this is her wedding gift from her parents. Well, his parents were. Um, considerably more wealthy than the Cranes. Uh, they they built them actually. There's a house, and then they were worn by actual brides. Mm. This is the original layout of the of this new of this room. Um, this room behind us is the this was the painting gallery. You can see how Augustus had his paintings just stacked, kind of like frame to frame. Um, this is Julia Corning, Julia Crane Corning, Dr. Corning on the flute, and her brother Benjamin Crane. Hmm. So in his later life, Benjamin had a kind of like a string of tragedies where his wife died, his young child died, then he had probably a heart attack or stroke, we're not really sure. He came back to be in the care of Dr. Corning and stayed here basically until the end of his life uh, as well. Um, and Dr. Corning died a few years prior to Julia, who was the last uh, original crane living here. Castleman's mother's home as well in Kentucky. It's um, rosewood, it's been reupholstered, and uh, I mentioned her father, uh, Brigadier General John Breckenridge Castleman. He actually wrote an autobiography called Act of Service. A part of his opening was to describe all the furniture in his parents' house, which uh, includes a description of this furniture. So we know it was very true to the original. It was. Um, it's over 150 vegetable dyes. So that's the original right there? Yeah, and uh, I mean this, the you know, the whole thing is the original except for like the area rugs yeah. parked on top of it. Oh, wow. Um, you can see how badly it wore where it was. Uh, yeah. But how beautiful it originally was. Hmm. But it became Alice Castleman's kind of like lunchroom. Um, she was a Kentucky Belle. She was used to that kind of a room. There was originally a skylight, which she took out. She'd drink with her friends, take cars. Um, and this room is also probably like the coldest room in the house even in the winter there's like no insulation at all <laughs> I could see how it could be yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so the original window this is the original window here. that's the original yeah, yeah. actually it slides up that's how it opens which I thought was pretty neat and I was like how does this open Actually, um, this would have been the room where you would come in and sit if you were going to be visiting with the lady or gentleman of the house, and you would have been served coffee or tea. You would have stayed only maybe about half an hour to 45 minutes. For women, it was considered the only way to make friends. Men were supposed to make friends while they were doing business. <laughs> <laughs> and um, men also were allowed to have visitors on Sundays where women weren't because they were just you know, somebody working all the time. So. Um, these, the wallpaper, the painting, um, it's almost all original. The ceiling has been repainted based on the troubloid that was found under paint during restoration in the 70s and 80s. Um, this, uh, this, the medallions above the chandeliers are supposed to, they catch the soot and stop it from spreading all over the ceiling so it's a little easier to keep clean. Um, these lamps are actually reproduction gas lamps um, or oil lamps 
This one was never electrified, although there's wires in the ceiling. Um, they only did that one for some reason. Okay. Um, this is the original fireplace. Uh, it's coal burning. All the fireplaces are coal burning. Um, it's the original mirror, which is an amazing condition. Wow. And the cornices, the drapes, and the curtains, those are original. The shades are obviously a little newer. But um, the velvet on the walls, the trim, all that, that is original house and the electricity was already in the 30s. I like the candles sticks back there oh, yeah, and the actually, clock. The candlesticks actually they um they match ones that were in the dining room. Uh, if you want to go back and look at those again too we can. They actually they tell a story it's Napoleon's favorite book, Paul and Virginia, and it's about these like two young children who are shipwrecked on an island where they meet the noble savage called the Savage and they teach him to read Furniture is original. It's original. It's a Stonehorn furniture that was sold to the Koreans and um, that swatch of fabric on that couch behind you. That is the original fabric. Mm. That's one of the last pieces we have left. Um, so you can see like the, the original one, it's a little, it's not, it's kind of butter yellow. Is it? It's, is the yeah, it's a little warm. But um, yeah. Mm. Uh, and then you, again, the, the corners here, the carpet has looks much better than in the middle of the floor for sure. Nice. The colors you see on the house are not original. They were chosen by Historical Society as a period paint scheme, but not correct for this building. So we did a lot of research and paint sampling, and these are actually the original colors of the house. Mm. And so it will be repainted. Um, actually, the stars are going to be green, but. You know, the, original, the original colors will begin to be painted on the house this spring as soon as it stops raining. Yeah, right. <laughs> it gets warm enough. And uh, we expect to have that done by the fall. Wow. Here's where they found the, the swatches of original um, wallpaper that they used to recreate the, the marble. All right, guys, so that's the, the Acorn House here in Morristown, New Jersey. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as much as I did. That's, that's pretty interesting. A lot of historical facts about this place. So if you're ever here, like I said, it's called the Acorn Museum. It's in here in uh, Morristown, New Jersey.